So Sad Safari recently went on this dude Chris Williamson's podcast. I'm not super familiar with the guy, but he's been having a lot of bodybuilders come on and talk about their top 10 exercises to build muscle. So Sally recently came on the podcast and talked about her top 10 exercises to build muscle. So I figured I'd watch this video and give you guys my take on her exercises. I've asked this question to a bunch of different people. If you only had 10 exercises for the rest of your life to hold on to as much muscle or build as much muscle as you could, which ones would you choose and why? 10 exercises? 10 exercises. It can be anything you want, but you've only got 10. Okay, let's start off. Leg press. Sally, we're not off to a very good start. Let's be honest here, the leg press is just a trash version of a normal squat. While both the squat and the leg press build the knee extensors and hip extensors, the squat transfers outside the gym far better than a leg press. First of all, the leg press is an open chain leg exercise. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with open chain leg exercises, most activities in real life are closed chain, particularly lower extremity movements. This is why I always crap on the leg curl and the leg extension because they're both open chain leg exercises that are not very realistic. I mean, just think about it. When in real life or in sports are you gonna be sitting on your ass generating force? The leg press also doesn't have any balance, stability, or weight bearing considerations. So it doesn't transfer outside the gym as well as ground-based free weight squat variations. You know, you can do different variations in it. You can hit like different parts depending on how you put your legs. Body bros are gonna get so crazy they can adjust their stance width and foot position on leg machines, even though you can do it on a squat too. With a narrow stance squat emphasizing the quads more and a sumo squat emphasizing more of the hip muscles. But either way, I'm not a big fan of these extreme foot positions and stance widths on leg exercises. And this is because pretty much all daily activities and sports skills have your legs underneath your hips. This is why I think a sumo squat is for ego lifting losers. I'm a much bigger advocate of changing your squat variations to target specific muscles. For example, having a more anterior loaded squat like a zerker squat or front squat will have more of a quad emphasis. And doing something like a low bar squat will have more of a hamstring and glute emphasis. My good old friend Leota Machida acted like it was so stupid that I said a low bar squat will target the hip extensors, the glutes, and the hamstrings strings more especially without actually offering any decent advice on how to prevent it and in your case all you recommended was to avoid these machines entirely and do low bar squats for your glutes and hamstrings which i'm just gonna let it speak for itself but since this kid doesn't believe me i'll read what it says in my strength and conditioning textbook in the back row, for example a more forward inclination of the trunk brings the weight horizontally closer to the knees thus reducing the resistive torque about the knees that the quadriceps must counteract at the same time the weight is horizontally farther from the hip increasing the resistive torque about the hip that the gluteus and hamstring muscles must counteract Interact. This resistive torque pattern is most often present when the barbell is positioned as low as possible on the upper back, often termed a low bar squat. So yeah, that's clearly a 10-8 round to me. Also, if you're looking for an athletic bodybuilding program that helps you build aesthetic muscle that transfers outside the gym, be sure to check out my Ultimate Athletic Bodybuilding Academy. This is a private community where you get monthly athletic bodybuilding workouts so you're changing your routine frequently so you avoid plateaus and also have a new fun workout to do every month. But you also get access to weekly Q&As with me and my brother Mario and so much more. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description. RDLs. Barbell, dumbbells, single leg. Barbell. RDLs. RDLs, this is a great exercise selection from Sally. First of all, this dude Chris keeps pissing me off. He pissed me off a little bit in the C-Bone video, so if you haven't watched that, watch it after you watch this video. Chris asked her to specify what RDL she means, barbell, dumbbell, single leg, this is a stupid question, but he's low-key an NPC bodybuilder, so I'm not surprised. There's this weird thing in the bodybuilding community where they're saying that dumbbells are better than barbells. And this is such a stupid comparison that I don't know why bodybuilders keep making it. This is kind of like saying, what's a better martial art, striking or wrestling? It's like they both have their pros and cons and they both have their place. Instead of thinking dumbbells or barbells, how about you think both and focus on choosing a variety of barbell and dumbbell exercises in your lifting routine. But enough of the Chris rant, I'll get back to the RDL. The RDL is a great foundation foundational movement to hit the hip extensors, primarily the hamstring. And it's way better than a stupid leg curl. Shane Namorduckerdur recently made a stupid video acting like the leg curl is an amazing exercise. And while it is important to train the knee flexor movement, in terms of hitting the hamstrings in a functional way, a hinge movement is far better than a knee flexion movement. Because the last time I checked, knee flexion isn't one of the basic human movement patterns. And as I mentioned earlier, open chain leg exercises like the leg curl are not very realistic. And if you are going to train knee flexion, don't do a lazy leg curl like Shane Namorduckerdur, but do a Nordic curl instead. The leg curl is also not a functional exercise. The only argument a bodybuilder has when I say functional exercise is saying, oh, if my goal is to build muscle, then it's functional. But these idiots don't understand there's actually a definition of functional exercise. And although there are many definitions of a functional exercise, this is the one I found in my textbook. Although the functionality of an exercise is often based on subjective judgment, exercises are considered to be more functional or to possess greater transferability when the core muscles are involved in conjunction with the actions of the upper or lower extremities. So I think that's another 10-8 round. I'm going crazy in this video already. 
Wait, I've already 1080'd Leon Machida and I 1080'd Shane Namadurkadur. Okay. Military press. With the barbell. Military press. Seated? Shoulder press. No, standing. So you can brace your core. I mean, you only get 10 exercises here. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. So you've made an ab exercise out of a shoulder exercise. Right. Sally's wifey here. You know a girl ain't for the streets if she says she likes standing exercises. And also, what's Chris doing here? He tries to peer pressure Sally into saying seated military press. But luckily, Sally's a strong, independent woman and didn't let the peer pressure get to her. Whenever you have the option, do a standing variation over a seated variation every time. Although you may not be able to do as much weight, this exercise will transfer outside the gym far better than a seated exercise. Because last time I checked, any time in real life, you're not generating force from a seated position. The typical bodybuilding argument is, we don't want the core to be a limiting factor. This limiting factor crap has to be the most annoying thing I've ever heard. This is kind of like Ben Simmons saying, my three-pointer is a limiting factor and then never working on his three-point. It's just straight cult for being weak. But back to the overhead press, is a great compound exercise for the shoulder and a vertical pressing motion is a foundational movement that everybody should master. And she mentioned our barbell overhead press. And as I mentioned earlier, dumbbell and barbell variations should be included in your routine. Incline dumbbells. <laughs> Every single person has said incline dumbbell press. Yeah. Chest press? Yeah. Yeah. Incline dumbbell bench press, another great choice from Sally. For bodybuilding purposes, because the upper chest is harder to develop, this is a great choice. But for an athlete, I would have recommended a flat bench. This is because you already chose an overhead press and an incline dumbbell bench press is pretty much in between a military press and a dumbbell bench press. So I would have just done overhead press and a dumbbell bench press. But with the upper chest creating a fuller looking chest, this is a great choice for an aesthetic purpose. And she did that nonsense again where she chose dumbbells over barbells. Like I said, both are great options. Gosh. Okay, what are, is it decline or incline? I always confuse myself. When you lean back you, a little bit and you do the curls. I, I think that's technically incline, but I know exactly what you yes, mean. Yes, because I always mess it. I yeah. know what you mean. Yeah. Those curls with dumbbells. Incline dumbbell curl for Sally. I think that's an okay choice. If you're limited to 10 exercises, I think this option sucks. But for hypertrophy of the biceps is a good option. I really like this exercise because you get an amazing stretch on the biceps. Even though you're sitting down, because you're changing the angle of your body that you wouldn't be able to do if you're standing up, I'm okay with it. When it comes to bicep training, it's important to hit the biceps from a variety of angles. Include exercises with the shoulders extended like this one. Include exercises with the shoulders in a neutral position like a standard bicep curl. Or do an exercise with the shoulders flexed like in a chin-up or a preacher curl. Okay, right? so we're halfway okay. through. Halfway through. Smoked. Legs are okay. Oh. Chest's okay. Shoulders are okay. Biceps. Right. Weighted pull-ups for back. Okay. Uh, that's, I think, maybe one of the only back ex exercises I need. Overhand, underhand, neutral. Oh, I'm not a pussy. Come on. Weighted pull-ups. That's a base choice from Sally. It's also really impressive that she can do weighted pull-ups because a lot of girls can't do them. I promise I'm not excessive. My huge female audience can vouch for me. But because women have larger lower bodies and smaller upper bodies than men, it's harder for them to do pull-ups. Also, if you're wondering why she says I'm not a pussy for doing overhand pull-ups, it's because neutral grip pull-ups and chin-ups are far easier than overhand pull-ups. So like I said, that's very impressive that she can do weighted pull-ups. Chris Bumstead said neutral. Oh, fuck. Uh, I mean uh... neutral. Right, that's six. Here goes Chris pissing me off again. Sally made a great choice, and then he brings up Sebum, acting like he's the gold standard of exercise selection. It's like, bro, you're not even the gold standard of aesthetics. I mentioned this in my Sebum video, but a neutral grip pull-up for bodybuilding purposes is not a great choice. It's kind of like you couldn't choose between focusing on back or biceps, so you got kind of scared and chose in between. Gosh, this is hard. Hammer curls to hit the other head okay. of the bicep. Right, okay, yeah. Standing, hammer curls. Uh-huh. I'm really starting to like Sally. She took an extra second to say standing hammer curls. This just shows she ain't for the streets. This is a good choice. Hammer curls are essential for building aesthetic arms. Because you're using a neutral wrist position, the biceps are less involved and there's more emphasis on the brachioradialis and the brachialis. In my opinion, the brachialis has to be the most overrated muscle, but bodybuilders like to include it to try and act smart. In PT school, we refer to the brachialis as the powerhouse of elbow flexion because it's heavily involved in pretty much every elbow flexion movement. So in my opinion, it's stupid to target it specifically because any elbow flexion that exercise will hit it well. But the brachioradialis is very important to target in terms of aesthetics because it's the biggest muscle in the forearm. Targeting the brachioradialis is a great time efficient way to build big aesthetic forearms to where you don't have to sit down every workout and spam dorky wrist curls. Yeah, we're good with biceps now. Yeah, no more biceps. I think I'm gonna have to do lateral, lateral raises for shoulders. Yep. Lateral raises is a pretty basic choice from Sally, but there's nothing wrong with a basic girl. Lateral raises are an incredibly important muscle to isolate. Not only because they build broad shoulders that give you a nice V taper, but because it's not heavily involved in compound movements. The anterior delts are heavily involved in pressing movements such as a bench press or an overhead press, and the rear delts are heavily involved in horizontal pulling exercises such as a barbell row. Oh my god, I didn't hit any triceps. Do I have one you've more got, exercise? You've got two left, I think. Two left? Yeah. Um, 
Skull Crushers. Skull Crushers are a pretty good choice from Sally. In my opinion, she was freaking out a little bit too much that she didn't include triceps. The triceps will be involved in the pushing movement she selected, so the overhead press and the incline bench press. And when you're limited to 10 exercises to build muscle, compound exercises are the best way to get the most bang for your buck. But the Skull Crusher is still a great way to hit your tricep. As I mentioned with the bicep, hitting it from different angles is very important. The same thing applies to the tricep. The Skull Crusher is a great exercise because it allows you to hit the long end of the tricep in a stretch position because the long end of the tricep is the only head of the tricep that's involved in shoulder extension. Extension. Yeah, okay. Skull crushes. So you got one left from all of that. <laughs> and then I think I'm going to have to do hanging leg raises. Perhaps. Yep. Yeah. Hanging leg raises, not bad, but because of all her base standing exercises, an oblique exercise would have been far better. It's good that she's emphasizing the low abs, but because all her standing exercises don't hit trunk rotation or the obliques very well, it would have been better if she included an oblique exercise. Doing some sort of rotation exercise instead would have ensured balance development of the abs. So those are Sally's top 10 exercises, and now I'll go over what I think she should have included. First thing is a horizontal pull exercise. It's great that she included the pull up, which is a great vertical pulling exercise, but a horizontal pulling exercise like a barbell row is a foundational human movement that needs to be included in her routine. The second issue, she didn't have a lunge variation. The majority of sports skills and activities of daily living are unilateral leg movements. So it would have been great if she included a lunge variation that would have transferred well to these activities. She also should have added a rotation exercise instead of the hanging leg rate. As I mentioned earlier, rotation is not hit well in compound lifts. So it would have been great if she included a rotation exercise instead of the hanging leg raise because the abs are hit very well in compound lifts. It also would have led to her exercises hitting the abs in the two most practical ways, which is stability and rotation. Another issue, she didn't include a carry exercise. The carry has to be the most underrated exercise that no bodybuilder ever hits. The carry does a great job working on grip strength and the core, and in particular, partial stability and deep stabilizer muscles. And the last issue I have with her exercises is too much arm focus. If I only had 10 exercises, I would have just focused on compound movements as the triceps are hit in pushing movements and the biceps are hit in pulling movements. This definitely isn't a big mistake, but if you're looking to get the most out of 10 exercises, compound movements would have been a better choice. Overall, if I had to rate her top 10 exercises, I would give it a solid 7 out of 10, which is actually higher than I would have given Seba. This mainly comes down to the heavy elbow flexion by for some reason, her selecting a leg press, which was an awful selection, and then her not including any horizontal pulling motion. But in terms of the most important test, which is my wifey material test, I'd say she easily passed. So I wouldn't be surprised if I got a DM in the next couple days. Thanks for watching this video. Leave any of your thoughts down below in the comments. Like the video if you enjoy, and subscribe for more content like this.